This is Jay Steger from Coal Country Vines and Wines. We are going to tell you how to calculate or measure the alcohol in wines right now. Okay, we are back and uh, what we're going to do here is uh, show you two different methods we use at Coal Country to determine the alcohol in wine. One is the calculation method and two is an ebulliometer. This is uh, an ebulliometer. Uh, it's a pretty reputable brand. It's been used for centuries. I think an, a, the ebulliometer was developed in uh, 1760 something or something like that. So they've been using it forever. So anyway, uh, the, but the first method is calculation. And uh, most of the yeasts we use here at Cold Country um, develop about 0.6 six, just a little under 0.6% alcohol per bricks. And, and in order to be able to calculate that out, you have to know your initial sugar. And I'll show you right now, we have, we have a uh, hydrometer right here. This is a cheap one. This one goes all the way from 40 bricks all the way down to zero. And it's, it's a hydrometer, you know, it measures specific gravity. Uh, the specific gravity of water is one, and then you'll see the incremental values go up from one as uh, there's more sugar in the uh, juice. But uh, for the wine industry, they calibrate it in bricks, bricks or bricks balling, and it goes, uh, this one goes from zero to 40, which uh, is zero to 40 bricks, which is roughly percent sugar. So once we get that initial sugar, and you can do it other ways too. You can get a refractometer, a cheap refractometer that you use out in the vineyard. You can use that to measure, measure initial sugar too. Not quite as accurate as a hydrometer, but uh, a lot cheaper. Uh, uh, and it really is a very versatile little tool. This is a refractometer. And with this thing here, you put, you have to make sure you got it all cleaned off and you put a drop of uh, demineralized water on this little plate right here. And then you look up at it into the light and you adjust it with this little guy right here to zero. Then you clean it back off, you dry it back off, you put a drop of your grape juice on there and you spread it out real nice and thin. And then you look at it and it'll give you your bricks reading. So two very good ways to measure initial sugar, the hydrometer being the more accurate of the two. And this actually is a scientific instrument. So now with that being said, you take your, uh, your initial sugar and it's about 21 bricks is where a lot of our lighter uh, white wines will start out. And that is, uh, that is roughly 12% sugar. If you multiply it out, 0.6 times 21 is going to be right around 12%. So now, uh, with that being said, um, if you uh, are making fruit wines, you're going to want to probably add sugar to get your uh, alcohol level up a little bit. And because uh, a lot of your fruit, fruit juices uh, start at about 12 bricks, which, uh, you know, that's uh, less than 7% uh, alcohol. And usually you want at least a little more than that. Uh, 12 is a nice number, but for some lighter fruit wines, you probably want to keep it at eight or nine. So uh, a rule of thumb, a ballpark number is five gallons of juice requires a half a cup of sugar to bring it up one bricks. So if you're bringing it up if you want to bring it up 10 bricks, you're going to use five cups of sugar into five gallons of juice. It's pretty simple, simple math. And, uh, you know, the other alternative is to just wing it. And a lot of, uh, a lot of home winemakers, uh, they just, uh, add sugar until it stops fermenting. And then that makes it stable. You don't have to worry about sterile, sterile filtering. All you have to do is bottle it and drink it. The alcohol is going to be pretty high, but, uh, that's uh, alcohol protects the wine. So that isn't a bad method if you can take the extra alcohol. If you're getting value out of these videos, please smash the subscribe button down below. This will give you a notification whenever we come out with a new video. It will also help us by basically um, giving us higher ratings and being overall better for our business and making it more possible to keep these videos coming. So help us out, smash the subscribe button, and if you like it, you can hit the like button too. Let's get back to the video. Okay, now with that being said, we're gonna take a look at this ebulliometer. Uh, this, uh, you can get these anywhere from uh, like $600 to about a thousand. This is a, uh, 
Um, they consider it a very accurate machine, but I don't uh, because uh, because we put we have a lot of wines with a lot of sugar in them, especially our ice wine. Uh, this loses its accuracy as soon as you have a lot of sugar in your wine. So what this is, this is a condenser because you don't want your alcohol to boil out. You want your alcohol to recondense and go back into your wine so that the concentration of alcohol in there stays the same so that you get a, uh, a very accurate reading. Otherwise, your alcohol level keeps on dropping. So now, what I'm going to do, this is a little, uh, um, this burns uh, wood alcohol. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to get some demineralized water. We're going to put it in here. And uh, there's a little uh, measure right on here for water. Uh, because, uh, because there's no alcohol in the water, you don't have to worry about having a whole lot of it. And the reason this works is, you gotta shut this little valve off right here. The reason this works is because uh, um, what we're doing right now is we're going to measure the boiling point of this water, pure water, at the current atmospheric conditions in this area. And that's why if you're going to do this all day long, you're probably going to have to recalibrate this thing. This is the calibration part. We're comparing, we're comparing uh, uh, the boiling point of pure water to the boiling point of the wine we're going to uh, um, test. First off, we're going to put some water in here to keep the condenser cool. That way uh, it won't be too hot when we do our wine. It's not important to have that water in there when you're uh, doing the uh, calibration. But if you don't, that, that condenser is going to heat up. So, okay, so now we're going to put our water in here. All right. We're going to take the thermometer out of here. This is a uh, this is a mercury thermometer, so uh, they're not too cheap. So you got to be a little careful with them. This uh, sits with its tip right in the boiling water. Okay, so now we're gonna light the uh, our little uh, alcohol burner here. Okay, so now we're putting it under here, and it's just gonna sit there and heat that water up until it boils, and then we're gonna read the temperature. Okay, so now we are boiling. And I will take a look at this. And if you, uh, if you look at this at the right angle here, you might be able to see it. Uh, we have 99 point, looks like uh, 99.7, 99.7. There it is, definitely 99.7. Okay, now we'll take this out of here. We'll put this on here for now so we don't uh, run out of uh, alcohol. Okay, and we have a sample of wine here. And uh, what we're going to do right now is uh, I dumped the uh, hot water out of here. Now we're going to rinse it out with wine so that, uh, so that we flush out all the water. If you don't do that, um, you're mixing your wine with a little bit of... Uh, of water and then it's going to give you a false reading low on your alcohol. Okay so now we're going to put our wine in there into the chamber but first we're going to measure it and uh, we go to the top line with the wine because you want to you want enough in there that even if if a little alcohol does get away it's not going to affect you drastically. So this part is not real important to be accurate. Okay. And we will put a little more water in there so that uh, we keep our condenser cool. Right. Then we are going to attempt to light our burner one more time. Mm. Okay, our burner is burning. 
Get our thermometer back in there. So now while that's heating up, I will show you what we do with that number we got. We got 99.7. So what we're going to do is put this at 99.7. Now, we're going to uh, show you. Let's see if I can get that. 99.7. We put our zero right here on 99.7. And now, when we get our... Uh, See, there's a zero, there's 99.7. When we get our uh, temperature off of here, then we will read it on this, on that same circle, and then the outside ring tells us, tells us how much alcohol we have. Okay, now the uh, temperature is coming up. It comes up pretty fast once it starts. I did pause for a while there because I didn't think you needed to sit here and Wait for the uh, four or five minutes that it takes for this temperature to come up. And now, we're still pretty low yet, but the alcohol in this should be uh, reasonably high because this is a port style wine and it, uh, we might need to adjust the alcohol a little bit um, to bring it up to where we want it. This, like I said, it's a port style wine, which you normally put the uh, the alcohol in um, halfway through fermentation, but we do a little adjusting of the sugar and the uh, alcohol um, after we figure, see what we have. Because a lot of times uh, your fermentation won't stop completely and it'll suck up some of your sugar and bring the alcohol up higher than you want it, or it'll stop right away and then you won't have enough alcohol. So we're at 90.5. We're at 90.6. So we take our little chart here, which as you remember, we had it set at 99.7. Okay, I'm gonna bring this, hopefully uh, we can actually focus that close. 90.7, 99.7's right there. So now we're going to a, a uh, reading of 90.6, which uh, 90.6 is a little disappointing. It's nowhere near as high as I wanted it to be. It is, it's only about 13.5% alcohol, so obviously we're gonna have to add a little more alcohol to this to bring it to, uh, to, bring it to probably the 16% uh, where we want it, which is way down here. So then the temperature would have only came up to 89.2. So uh, we got a little ways to go yet. All right, so now we got everything put away. We're gonna leave her air dry for a few hours. And uh, uh, our calculation uh, for uh, initial sugar doesn't really apply to this wine because you actually stop the fermentation ahead of time. So this is where an ebulliometer really comes in handy when, you're, uh, when you don't have that initial starting point to, to figure out your final alcohol. And the, uh, the government actually wants to know what your alcohol is for a commercial winery because uh, your tax rates are different based on the alcohol level. So with that all being said, um, you use an initial calculation if you're gonna let it uh, ferment to dry. You use an ebulliometer if you've got, uh, if you've got uh, um, some special situation like a port style wine, or if you're trying to satisfy the, uh, the US government, the TTB, an ebulliometer is an acceptable method to test alcohol. Uh, very uh, precise instrument. Uh, if you do it right, uh, with highly sugared wines, it's not quite so precise, but uh, there's ways you can get around that. You can dilute it and then multiply it times the dilution rate. So with that all being said, we have our alcohol level. We have our place all cleaned up. This is Jay Stager, Cold Country Wines. I'll see you next time.